Well, good morning. Welcome to our morning devotional today. This week we're in devotional classics again, 52 Christian writers from down through the centuries. And today we'll be hearing from George Buttrick. He lived uh, in the 20th century, and apparently he became pastor of Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church in New York City in 1927, and he served there until his death in 1980. That's a long, <laughs> that's a long pastorate. Um, he wrote many books and preached many sermons, and apparently one of his famous, most famous is a book about prayer called Prayer. So here are some opening tips he gives. This is from George Buttrick, Prayer. We now attempt to give some clear and detailed guidance in private prayer. There can be no rules, certainly no binding rules, but only hints. Yet no one need travel an unmarked path. The saints are our teachers and other people versed in prayer who would be aghast to be called saints. Jesus himself is the teacher. Prayer is friendship with God. Friendship is not formal, but it is not formless. It has its cultivation, its behavior, its obligations, even its disciplines, and the casual mind kills it. So we offer here, as a guide map, not as a chain, a simple regimen of private prayer. Prayer begins not in asking, but in a silent self-preparation. We should not rush into the presence. The church of private devotion should be entered through the vestibule in an orderly quietness. This comes best as a byproduct of a mind focused on God. We say to ourselves, His light fills the world. It fills this room. Thus we meditate. The next step is an act of faith on which Jesus laid the constant stress. All things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. In this initial silence of prayer, we say to ourselves that whatever we ask in the nature of Christ is ours, granted only our earnestness in prayer and life. Always prayer is prefaced by an act of faith. We take counsel with our certitudes, not with our doubts and fears. In prayer itself, there is no fixed order, but both a primary impulse and the experience of praying people show that the first stage may be thanksgiving. A lecturer to a group of businessmen displayed a sheet of white paper on which was one blot. He asked what they saw. All answered, a blot. The test was unfair. It, it invited the wrong answer. Nevertheless, there is an ingratitude in human nature by which we notice the black disfigurement and forget the widespread mercy. We deliberately call to mind the joys of our journey. Perhaps we should try to write down the blessings of one day. We might begin. We could never end. There are not pens or paper enough in all the world. The attempt would remind us of our vast treasure of content. Therefore, the prayer of thanksgiving should be quite specific. I thank thee for this friendship, this threat overpassed, this signal grace. For all thy mercies is a proper phrase for a general collect, but not a private gratitude. If we are thankful for everything, we may end by being thankful for nothing. The thanksgiving should also probe deep, asking, what are life's abiding mercies? Thus, gratitude would be saved from earthliness and circumstance and rooted in life beyond life. Count your many blessings, says the old hymn, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. This prayer should end in glad and solemn resolve. Lord, seal this gratitude upon my face, my words, my generous concern for my neighbors, my every outward thought and act. This section goes on to talk about a prayer of confession, a prayer of intercession, the prayer of petition, prayer as meditation, and this is all one short section of a big thick book. And there are many books that have been written about prayer. How have you learned to pray? Did you learn it by listening to others who prayed for you over the years? Did you learn it in a class? Have you learned it from reading books? However much we learn from prayer, some from others, hopefully some from experience, there's always more to learn. 
There's always more creativity, different approaches, things we've left out, things we've never even thought about. So why not find a good book about prayer? If you go to Amazon or any other online website uh, about with books and just search books on prayer, there'll be no end to what you can find. You might start with the one by George A. Buttrick. There's one by Richard Foster called Prayer that talks about all different kinds of prayer. There's all kinds of different ones. But it might give you a new way of approaching God, a new way of recognizing God in your life, of pursuing friendship with God. Maybe find a book. Maybe let your prayer life be deepened and broadened. Let's pray today. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that there's never a time or place where you are not, where you're not ready to be present to us, to make us aware of your light in and around us. Show us new ways to connect with you, new ways to know you, and slow our minds and our lives down enough to recognize that you're with us, to hear from you and be shaped by you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, join us again for our next morning devotional.